Now, let's take a look at how the tunnel will be constructed between 3rd and 9th Streets by looking at a representative area. Phase 1 begins with securing the area around the work site, followed by removing some trees and preparing for utility relocation work. Utility reconstruction work would take place within portions of the surrounding streets and public spaces. The CSX construction team will work with DDOT to adjust traffic flow during street work and minimize disruption to the neighborhood. Crews would then build temporary access driveways so that residents always have direct access to their homes throughout the construction period. Next, the construction team would secure the entire construction area for each city block, closing Virginia Avenue and installing fencing. Crews would then construct DDOT-approved street decks, or temporary bridges, so that all north-south streets between 3rd and 11th streets are open to motorists, bicyclists, and pedestrians, and accessible to wheelchair users and persons with disabilities throughout construction. Cross streets would be temporarily closed only when these street decks are being installed and removed. Those closures are expected to take less than two weeks in each instance. Construction crews will work with neighbors and emergency responders to make sure emergency response access is maintained at all times for the entire construction process. With the site secure and street decks in place, crews would begin to remove the existing surface features, such as paving and sidewalks, in the enclosed construction zone and begin work on excavation for the new tunnel. They would excavate the area for the south side tunnel, installing internal bracing and support structures. The new tunnel would be constructed from the ground up, beginning with the concrete floor. As the structure is completed, the new tracks would be installed in the south tunnel and prepared for the switchover of train operations. Once crews have finished the last sections of the new walls, roof, and track work in the south tunnel, they would fill in the area above the tunnel. With the south side tunnel complete, train operations would move to the new tunnel, marking the completion of Phase 1 construction. In Phase 2, crews would first install the second half of the cross street decks on the north side of Virginia Avenue, again ensuring that residents and visitors have access to the north-south cross streets. Then they would begin excavation to expose the existing tunnel, followed by removal of the roof and the south tunnel wall. Crews would then excavate deeper in the area around the old tunnel to construct a new concrete floor, walls, and roof of the second tunnel. The new concrete floors would reduce the vibrations from freight traffic running through the tunnels in comparison with the old structure. Once the roof is constructed and the area on top of the tunnel is filled in, crews would begin the final restoration of the surrounding area. This includes building a new street, sidewalks, and bike paths, installing landscaping, and taking other measures to restore and enhance the neighborhood. This is the typical construction sequence that would be followed for the majority of the project length. However, the process east of 9th Street and west of 3rd Street would be slightly different. For the area east of 9th Street to the new east portal near 12th Street, the new tunnel would consist of two separate single-track structures and two portals. This design solution is necessary for the tunnel to avoid the foundations and columns supporting the I-695 11th Street Bridge. The existing tunnel portal located just east of 11th Street would be extended approximately 340 feet, moving freight operations into an enclosed tunnel to a point just east of the proposed future 12th Street. In the area between 3rd Street and the tunnel portal just west of 2nd Street, there is limited space due to the existing support columns for I-695 and a large sewer tunnel. So at this end, an approximately 230-foot long section of the tunnel reconstruction would not have a roof during most of Phase 1 and Phase 2 construction. Near the end of Phase 2, the tunnel would be roofed over. We know there have been questions about trains running through open trenches during construction. Under this plan, trains would run in enclosed tunnel structures near all residential sections throughout construction. 
the limited open trench area at the extreme west end away from residences would be located entirely within the construction zone, which would be secured from public access by perimeter fencing and extensive security measures.